Welcome back to the knife box channel everyone. So how does this knife carry? Well, to tell you the truth, I found this knife to carry quite well. It's a very large knife and it weighs 4.7 ounces. But because of its low footprint in the pocket, it's quite slender and it just kind of slides right in even in these kind of thin sweatpants. Oh, meet Sammy. That's my daughter. She's going to be joining us on the walk. Anyways, in a conventional set of blue jeans like most of us fellas like to wear, I find the knife carries quite well actually. It doesn't leave a large footprint here. The clip does attract a little too much attention with the holes in my opinion, but it does carry quite well. And just a little bit of the knife is sticking out, so I like that. So the next question, how does it feel in the hand? Well, to be truthful, it actually feels quite nice. They chose a really nice grade carbon fiber for this project and there is no voids in it or I couldn't find any sharp areas and every corner seems to have been polished or finished over. So it's quite comfortable. There's no sharp edges anywhere or anything like that, not even on the blade other than the sharp edge that is supposed to cut stuff. I just really like the overall balance and feel of this knife as well. It just deploys really easily. Now as far as the way it cuts, it's quite important to highlight how low the blade hangs and how much cutting edge you have to cut stuff without straining your wrist. That's one of the biggest highlights of this knife for me. Even in the reverse grip, it's just naturally comfortable. It's quite weird how comfortable this knife really is. But um, it's something I'm going to recommend highly for an everyday use. Now I'm sorry lefties, if you want to be tricky kind of like how I'm doing it right now, you can still get away with owning one of these if you'd like. But he does not currently make a left handed one as far as I'm aware of. Okay guys, let's get some action here. So the action is pretty much as good as it gets. I can't even believe this is a $220 knife or whatever it is, $212. This is just an incredible action. There's no blade play side to side or up and down. This is just a really nice solid knife. And you can see the detent actually the ball engages really high, or I guess I should say disengages really high. So that allows just a nice, long, smooth travel and a good drop shut action. And lastly, most importantly, how does it cut? Well, I already talked about the angle and the amount of cutting edge per inch that you have, but Beyond that, it's really got quite a useful profile, as polarizing as it looks. You do have quite a functional tip on it, and you have quite a bit of cutting edge. So as far as a cutting machine, I mean, I'm going to say this thing just really fits the bill as a good cutter. Uh, it's going to be fairly thin behind the edge. I came out about 18 thousandths behind the edge, which is pretty good for a production knife so overall I don't know I'm just gonna have to say it is a good knife Bill it will kill all right guys welcome back to the knife box channel so we're gonna talk about the Hellraiser here let me wrap up my thoughts kind of on this thing so, to tell you the truth, I knew when this thing came out, I saw it, and I've seen a bunch of cool variations of it, and it becomes more and more tempting every time that I see a new variant of it. They become more and more attractive. Like, for example, this uh, green G10 one. Man, I love that one. I was so tempted by that. Um, also, while I was doing this video, I noticed they do Damasteel versions, too, and then... Over here, I'll show you one of the crazy carbon fiber versions there. So yeah, a lot of choices, it's, it's kind of crazy. 
so anyways um, really really freaking cool um, but I think if I'm gonna buy one I'm gonna buy one of the mid techs and the reason for that is these very scary aesthetic holes here that you'll see in the clip here too these aspirations I guess you could say um, they're not my flavor you know like I don't like holes everywhere um, I think it looks cool and I get it but it's you know if I can choose not to have it then I think I'm gonna go that route because I really do love the design now one thing I really want to highlight again is just how low this cutting edge comes down to so what does that mean to you well it's simple if you're holding the knife and especially for like kitchen duties and things like that with the belly hanging so low the cutting edge uh, your wrist is not going to get tired from angling so hard just to try to get that flat edge in there something more like this for example right this to get a nice straight cut it's it's going to be more me dragging the tip right like i'm not really getting that much of a cutting edge on the surface so this is where the magic is on this one when you're cutting i mean look at all that cutting edge you can kind of um, get to on the knife so that's kind of a big highlight something i really notice uh, no fatigue using a knife like this um, the other thing that was really impressive was the action the ceramic detent and the bearings I mean the thing is tuned so well it literally looks like I just hit a button and it's an automatic knife um, I mean look at this it's it's pretty wild and it fires out really 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 hard um, it's tuned very nicely I mean you can see the gaps between the pivot are kind of non-existent I mean this is really really tight um, this knife is an import import knife uh, which means it probably comes from somewhere around here uh, I don't know if it's been disclosed who exactly is the OEM for this um, but man they're good at um, look at the contouring on the carbon fiber so this handle is extremely comfortable then a little pop of color I think is a nice touch on both sides you know um, even kind of barreling out and putting a little polish on the barrel spacers um, uh, let's also show off the liners of course if you look inside we got some big old holes in there to save weight so kind of everything's been thought out and these liners have been nested right into the carbon fiber so it looks seamless and they don't move look at that the liner locks right there it's been polished it's been jimped and it's been crowned and it's actually been kind of opened up right there to go with this little opening so easy access um, it does drop fairly fast very smooth very comfortable even in the reverse grip I mean wow just kind of like more versatile than what I actually expected it to be and I was so curious about it because my buddy Dirk please go subscribe to his channel right now anyways my buddy Dirk this is his knife and he just kind of sent it and I was always so fascinated because he loves this knife and I get it now it's just really 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 well done sorry I keep whacking the camera guys and the last thing I kind of just want to throw in there as well is is the um, the crowning so you can see they jimped it first and then they crowned it so you have that nice smooth crowning you don't really have this really ragged uh, jimping up at the top so the knife has nice grip to it and um, you can get up on top of the blade which is comfortable for cutting um, even if you hold it back here and you're not completely feeling on top of the blade you still kind of are and you still kind of feel like you got good control of it so um, 
yeah, just a pretty amazing cutting tool. So now let's do some size comparisons and just wrap this video up here. Um, so here's something popular, the Benchmade bug out. I got a really cool video coming up on this too. Um, all the parts are in the knife box to basically pimp it out in all green titanium, including the axis lock bar. So that should look cool. Uh, just to bring out a little eye candy, I thought I'd bring out the Phasma from Real Steel Knives. Really cool knife. I'm always fascinated when kind of these production companies try to come out with something to a custom level. This one was really well done. And the designer is uh, Poltergeist uh, Bladeworks, which is, oh, I love that guy's designs. So next, we get into like the closer to the mid mid-size range knives. Something even a little bit bigger, right? Let's get these guys down here. Now what you're looking at here is a Kurt American uh, Phantom. But this is what I consider like my good EDC size knife, something that I would carry. This is like my perfect ideal size knife. So you can see this is still kind of like in my wheelhouse. So I didn't really carry it around much because it's not my knife. So I took it around the neighborhood in my pocket just to get the feel of walking around with it. Um, but I didn't take it any further than that really and carry it around the house to check it out. Um, but it carries very well. So something else I got new recently, I'm just going to kind of show. I know these are popular. Um, Blade-wise, they're pretty kind of, they're very similar actually in the way that they're designed. As far as uh, the way that the stance of the hand and the cutting edge dips down. So I kind of like to bring this one out as an example. I think it's a very good one. And this is the Custom Knife Factory Evo 2.0. Um, very cool knife, very nicely made, a lot of details um, on it, and um, yeah, something I thought was kind of comparable and really cool. Different blade shape, but you guys can kind of see where I'm going at with that. So, there's some really good examples, but I think we should kind of see what it looks like against some bigger and beefier knives. So let's get these things out of the way here. This thing here is a, a guillotine. All right, so let's bring out some stuff here. So I thought the XM18 series was something everybody's familiar with. So here's my XM18 3.5 inch. Um, this is 3.6 inch of cutting edge. So you can see they're comparable as far as the cutting edge is concerned, but because of the curve, you technically have a much longer cutting edge here than you do here. Hence, you got more cutting edge inch per inch. So kind of cool. Um, then let's bring out a XM24. Figured that's a good comparison there. So there you have it. Now the XM24 does have a very large finger choil versus this one's just uh, a sharpening choil. And this one's just choilless, or I guess a little sharpening choil right there. So um, cutting edge wise, we're kind of all in the same wheelhouse, but a little bit more on the XM24 side, right? Um, which I believe is 3.75 inches on this guy right here. Uh, the last knife I brought out for comparison just for kind of like more of the bigger beefy folders. Is this Emerson H M M You um you had you 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 could you do you you want what what the hell is this thing called? It's called the X H D H M M V K. <laughs> there we go. Anyways so there you have it, compared to something really beefy and really monstrous. Um, the Hellraiser just kind of still sizes up. I mean, I'm impressed, guys. This knife, it just kind of fits everywhere. So, yeah.
let's wrap this up with the final thoughts. So overall, the price of 200 and I think they started 212 and then the damage steel ones I think were like 700 bucks. Kind of similar to what you would see in the, um, when the the bags did uh, Riot projects with the Steelcraft series, right? They had the Damas Steel, and those were about like 700 bucks. So it's not crazy to think that a Damas Steel, one of these, would be around that same price. Um, so yeah, kind of a whole lot of different variances, cool carbon fibers, really nicely designed, cuts well, good tool, still has a nice um, viable you know, tip to use for cutting. I don't know, guys. I'm pretty much sold on it. Um, I will not be getting the P-Series, but I think I'm going to get myself one of those mid-tech versions. Really damn cool. Now, I do have one prediction. I do predict that the mid-tech version is not going to be quite as nice and refined as this one. That's just my assumption. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Anyways, guys, if you guys have been eyeballing one of these and it's, you know, aesthetically your jam, go out and get one. I mean, you are not losing any money um, buying one of these. They're just worth every penny. So this is Alex from the Knifebox channel signing out. We'll see you guys on the next one.